Good morning. Welcome to our worship service on this last Sunday after the Epiphany. It's Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, this Wednesday, we begin Lent with Ash Wednesday. Uh, we'll begin our worship this morning with our first hymn, Hymn 522. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. 
Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. And in the voice that came from the bright cloud, you foreshadowed our adoption as your sons. In your mercy, make us co-heirs of glory with Jesus our King, and bring us at last to heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading for Transfiguration Sunday is taken from the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 24. This is Moses and the people of Israel around Mount Sinai. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up. They saw the God of Israel. Under his feet they saw what looked like a pavement of sapphire as clear as the sky. The Lord did not lay his hand on the dignitaries of the people of Israel. They gazed at God, and they ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain, wait there, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commands that I have written, so that you can teach them. Moses set out with his assistant Joshua and went up onto the mountain of God. He said to the elders, 
Wait here for us until we come back to you. Look, here are Aaron and her. They will be with you. Whoever is involved in a dispute can go to them. Moses went up onto the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered the mountain for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses out of the middle of the cloud. The appearance of the glory of the Lord looked like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered into the middle of the cloud and climbed up the mountain. Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. We'll now sing Psalm 2. Psalm 2D, you'll find it printed in the Psalter, not the hymnal. The second reading for this morning is taken from Peter's second letter, chapter 1. To be sure, we were not following cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the powerful appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice came to him from within the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We heard this voice, which came out of heaven, when we were with him on the holy mountain. We also have the completely reliable prophetic word. You do well to pay attention to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, till the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, since we know this above all else. No prophecy of scripture came about from someone's own interpretation. In fact, no prophecy ever came by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were being carried along by the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Please rise as we sing the gospel acclamation. (laughs) 
one of the gospel printed in the Saint Matthew chapter 17. Six days later Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and he led them up onto a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured in front of them. His face was shining like the sun. His clothing became as white as the light. Just then Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, I will make three shelters here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. Just then a voice came out from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down and were terrified. Jesus approached, and as he touched them, he said, Get up. Do not be afraid. When they opened their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Do not tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for this morning is the gospel lesson taken from the Gospel of Matthew. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and he led them up onto a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured in front of them. His face was shining like the sun. His clothing became as white as a light. Just then, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, I will make three shelters here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. <coughs> While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. Just then a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down and were terrified. Jesus approached, and as he touched them, he said, Get up, do not be afraid. When they opened their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Do not tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The name of our Savior, dear children of God, have you ever tried to talk on a phone in a very noisy room? You press that cell phone probably close to your ear. You can, you can kind of hear who is talking to you, but you know that if you stay there, you're going to really miss what they are trying to tell you. And so what do you do? Most of the time, you try to find a room next to this room or someplace else, and you go behind closed doors, and there, it might be a little more quiet. You can listen. You can hear. You'll know what they're going to say. Now, we live in a very noisy and busy world. And not just with the commerce and the noise that is out there in our world. No, even within our own families, it's a noisy and busy world. With grade school age children, not only are they going to school, but they have a lot of things they do after school. They have the weekends filled with all different kinds of sports and music. They get into high school and suddenly they have a social uh, out at here and there. They're going everywhere. Fathers at home have jobs, other things around the house that they need to take care of outside and in. Mothers also have jobs and have things they need to take care of outside and in. And life becomes very busy, very noisy. Well, we're about to step into the season called Lent. Where God speaks to our hearts and wants us to contemplate all that his son has done for us. And in a very noisy and busy world, inside and out, it's very easy for us to miss what God wants us to know. We start on Ash Wednesday and, and suddenly we're close to Easter. And maybe because of so many different things going on in life, we, we've missed the number of services, we've, we've missed the number of opportunities to, to hear God and His Word, to hear what Jesus has done. And then suddenly Easter has come and gone, and well, okay, another year. See, maybe we all need to look at our lives and say, what doors can I shut? What noise for a while can I turn off so that I can spend some time listening about my Savior? To give my Father in heaven an opportunity to talk to me through his word that I can grow in my faith. See, Transfiguration Sunday becomes a, a very important Sunday because it's really that doorstep 
into the season of Lent. And there are things that we learn on this day through the, the readings of Scripture that we need because we're going to see other things happen in the next 40 days that otherwise are going to seem rather strange, almost out of control. So there's knowledge of Scripture that we need today. At the same time, there's Scripture that we need so that as we go through the season of Lent, we get all the, the strength and comfort that God offers us. And so this morning, we're going to go up on this mountain with our Savior. And we're going to watch and we're going to listen carefully as Jesus prepares his disciples, really prepares us, for his passion. He does that first by giving proof that he is God. And at the same time, shows us why he had to come. Now, transfiguration, as people look at it, really stands in bold contrast to how most people in our world, and unfortunately even Christians and even Lutherans, look at God. I had a number of articles sent to me over the past week about how people have seen things in, in different Christian magazines. And how Jesus is really portrayed as a human being no different than any of us. That he's a, a nice man, a good teacher. I had even one article that, that compared what happened here on the Mount of Transfiguration to the Disney movies where the, the little uh, wizards and wizards fly around. It's a nice story. But it really didn't happen. See, they can't see Jesus for true, he truly is. He's a man. Yes, he's a human being. There's no denying that. He has all the, the characteristics of a human being. He, he got hungry and he had to eat. He got tired and he had to sleep. He even had human emotions as he cried at the, the funeral of his friend Lazarus. And so Jesus, human being? Of course. but more than just a human being. Because here on the Mount of Transfiguration, these, these three disciples, in a way, were able to see past Jesus' humility. That is, that Jesus was not making full and constant use of his divine powers as God. They, be, they were able to see at least a quick glimpse of who he truly was. And it made an impression. And Matthew describes it this way. He says, he, there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. They saw a, a, maybe a shaded down idea of Jesus and all of his glory. John knew what he saw. He begins his gospel by saying, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. You, you heard Peter described it in our epistle lesson for today when he said, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. True man, yes. But also true God. And not a little bit of each, but 100% man, 100% God. How, how can we explain that? 
You can't. But that's who Jesus is. Now why is that so important? Why, why take these disciples and, and place them on the Mount of Transfiguration and give them this quick glimpse? Why, why have this recorded in Scripture that we have a, a Sunday set aside that is always Transfiguration Sunday and it is always the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany and it's always the Sunday right before Lent? Why? Because of what's going to happen to him. See, if Jesus is just a man, just a human being, then we'd have to look at him and say, oh, that poor guy. Got caught up in a bad situation. Yes, we can, we can look at Jesus and we can say, See, that's how we are to uh, humble ourselves and to take a beating and, and we don't strike back. See what happened to Jesus? He didn't do it. He just took it. Poor guy. And he shows us, as people like to say, he shows us how to suffer. He shows us how to die. He shows us how to do all these things, but he's just a human being. Oh, Jesus wasn't helpless. He wasn't a poor guy caught up in a bad situation. Peter, in the Garden of Gethsemane, does what? He pulls out his sword because he's going to protect Jesus. And Jesus says, hold on, Peter. Think about it. If I needed to be guarded and protected, I could call down legions of angels from heaven, and they would guard and protect me. And these people around here would be nothing. In fact, he had showed just earlier that, in a matter of speaking, they were really nothing compared to Jesus because they came looking for him in the garden. And Jesus said, well, hey, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. And what happened? They fell back. By the very power of his word, they had to do what he wanted them to do. So Jesus wasn't some poor guy caught up in a bad situation. He is God. So why did he do it? Why suffer? Why die? Because he loves you. See, what we're watching is somebody willingly taking our sins upon himself and paying for them with his suffering and death on the cross. And it seems strange to us because in our minds, Jesus, fight back! The disciples thought the same thing, but Jesus says, no, I'm not going to because I, you need me. To suffer, to die. And he's willingly going to do that. So here on the Mount of Transfiguration, it is very important that we understand who he is. That he is God. But as we stand here, we also see why he has come. Because along with Peter, James, and John, we suddenly realize that there's two other people standing on this mountain with Jesus. We're told they're Moses and Elijah. Why Moses and why Elijah? Well, they, they represent the Old Testament. Moses, as we heard in the Old Testament reading, was the, the giver of the law. He was up on Mount Sinai with God, and God gave him the, the Ten Commandments and the entire law for the people of Israel, and he came down and he gave it to them, and he would, taught it to them, and they were to obey it, but they couldn't. And they didn't. And so God promised the Messiah who would come and who would. See, standing there, Jesus was there to fulfill the law, 
that God had given through Moses. There stood also Elijah. One of the great prophets of the Old Testament, a, a prophet. How many times through the prophets did God tell his people, this is what the Savior is going to do, this is what the Messiah is going to do. He told them so many different things, and Jesus was there not only to live a life that would obey the law perfectly, but also to live the life that fulfilled every single one of the prophecies of the Old Testament. Every single one of them. And so that we can look at Jesus and say there is no doubt this is the Messiah. This is the one that God promised to Adam and Eve that was going to come. Where he fulfills Moses, he fulfills Elijah, he fulfills the law and the prophets. But Moses and Elijah were not up there just representing Old Testament people. They were also representing all people. You included. Because don't forget, Moses and Elijah were human beings. They were, they were not perfect, sinless, and holy. They needed a savior from sin too. And so Jesus was there really going to suffer and die and pay for the sins of the two men, the, really the five men who were sitting on top of that mountain. Two had already been in heaven because of the promises of God. When God says something, it's going to happen. Three someday would be in heaven because of what Jesus was about to do, fulfilling all the promises of God. But all of them no different than us human beings. Who needed a savior. Or Moses and Elijah would not have been there. The disciples would have no shot of heaven. And neither would you. But Jesus. True God. And true man. As the Bible tells us, was born into this world, was born under the law, had to obey the law, and obeyed it perfectly. Jesus, true God and true man, took upon himself as God the entire sins of a world, everybody who ever existed, and then went to the cross and paid for them with his death on the cross. And then Jesus, as faith in him, all that he did, his life and his death, becomes yours. See, Jesus is our Savior. And on this day, it is vitally important that you understand and believe exactly who He is. Because after this day, we have to walk off this mountain. And we're going to hear about things that happened to Jesus that we would say, Isn't He God? The answer is yes. He's God who willingly came off that Mount of Transfiguration for you and me. Willingly now walks toward Jerusalem, continuing to preach and teach, knowing what awaited him there. And even though he could have very simply, at the, at the first sign of trouble, said, you're all gone, and everybody would have been dead. But then so would have we. Not just physically dead, but spiritually dead, separated from God forever. But Jesus, the Son of God, came to save you. Don't forget who he is. He's God. And stand in awe of why he came to save you. Amen.
Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we now place the offering on the altar and then we will pray. We come, O oh Savior, to your throne to give you of our treasure, moved by your love which on the cross was given without measure. Your love for us, paid out in blood, purchased our salvation. Help then our love reflect your love till we live with you in heaven. Amen. We pray. We praise you, O oh Father, for the precious gift of your Son and for his glorious transfiguration on the holy mountain. Give us the firm resolve to listen to your Son, the eager readiness to believe his promises, and the joyful willingness to heed his commandments. By the sign of Moses and Elijah, show us that blessed are the dead who die in faith, for they shall know the power of Christ's resurrection and shall be changed from glory into glory. O God and Father, let your Holy Spirit find a dwelling in our poor bodies and transform our weak, sinful lives into the radiance of goodness purity, and righteousness. Transform our minds, our understanding, our judgments, yes, our whole persons, to reflect the mind of Christ. Take our sickness and pain, our disappointments and despair, our sorrows and mourning, our pride and anger, our selfishness and envy, our hate and fear. Take all these, O Father, and transform them by the healing touch of Jesus into noble impulses, pure motives, kind thoughts, constructive deeds, high courage, and true faith. Lord of life and death, we thank you for the countless ways you showed mercy to our fellow believer, Ione Kessler, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought her to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus, her Savior. By the truth that their love is one with you and your promise that you are with them, comfort her family and all who mourn. Cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant the lifeless body rest and at last together with us all a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Teach us all to number our days aright that we may gain hearts of wisdom and finally be saved through Jesus Christ our Lord. We now ask you to hear us as we are being our private petition. Look on your church, O Lord, here and in every place, and grant that we and all who believe in the name of Jesus may daily offer up to you the acceptable sacrifices of repentance, thanksgiving, and loving obedience. Hear our prayer, and by your mercy, grant our petition for Christ's sake. Amen. We now join in the next hymn.
Please rise for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. For the final hymn, you may be seated. Please follow along with the soloists as we sing the verses. It's a very familiar hymn to you, but it's going to be in a little different setting. So there will be a soloist who will lead you along. But please feel free to join in with the hymn. Good morning uh, to each one of you. Maybe, and first of all, thank you uh, for the uh, ones who uh, played the instruments and sung this morning. Uh, with the new hymnal, there is more music than I think anybody could ever use. Um, in fact, we're starting a website where you can put in a hymn, you can put in the instrument you want to play with that hymn, and it'll give you the music. 
Um, so it's just, if you play an instrument and would be interested in, in using it here in church and, and leading us in the song, please talk to Morgan Haig. Uh, we're just, we're, we want to try some of these things and uh, please feel free to talk to her if you'd like to uh, be involved with that in any way. Uh, a few things, uh, I, I guess when you, for the first time I believe, we've had three calls out all at the same time. Uh, the pastor call, principal call, and fifth and sixth grade, and we have a little bit of news on that. Uh, maybe the, for first of all, some really good news. Uh, the kids have been doing very well in New Ulm, as I guess we're kind of always expecting. Uh, they both are still undefeated. They play this afternoon at four and 5.15. Uh, if you'd like to go to New Ulm and, and see them play, uh, I'm not sure where is it MBL or the at the college, um, but uh, they play this afternoon in New Ulm. Uh, and then two quick letters. First of all, from David Fulton, I'm writing to acknowledge that on February 13th I was contacted by Mr. Wilmus informing me that your recent call meeting you had extended a divine call to me to serve as principal and grade seven and eight teacher of your Lutheran Elementary School. It is always a humbling experience to receive a call to serve in God's kingdom. I ask for your prayers as I consider how and where I can best serve our Savior and his lambs. Please also keep my family in your prayers. Again, his contact information should be in the bulletin. Uh, many of you are calling these people who are holding the calls, and feel free to again contact Mr. Fulton if you would like. And then also from uh, Mr. Paul Schultz, who was holding our fifth and sixth grade teacher call. Uh, greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After many days of prayer, learning, and guidance, I feel that the Lord has led me to return your call to be fifth and sixth grade teacher. Thank you for all the information that you gave and provided for me during my period of deliberation. It was wonderful to hear from the many members of the congregation. Through this entire process, I have greatly appreciated your prayers as I considered where I might best serve the Lord in the public ministry. It is also a great comfort to know that whatever decision I may make, the Lord will bless it. I will keep your congregation in my prayers as you continue to grow in your ministry in St. John's. Blessings in Christ, Mr. Paul Schultz. So we will have to be uh, working on uh, lining up maybe a call meeting, probably at least another two weeks, maybe a little more. That's how long they need to set up these uh, uh, call lists. But uh, So the fifth and sixth grade teacher uh, has declined the call. Uh, to teach here at St. John's. So right now, the pastor call is still in the hands of Pastor Shrimp, and the principal call is in the hands of uh, Mr. Fulton. And we continue to pray for them, and again, if you'd like to contact them, uh, feel free to do so. Thank you. Have a great day.